Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Shutterstock. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to get the best image quality with DJI drones. All right guys, so I'm at Round Top Mountain here in the Ozarks, and I'm gonna be flying with the Mavic Air on the south point of the mountain. It's got some nice rock terrain features, should look pretty cool. But I've got about a mile or so to get to the south point, so I'm gonna meet you guys at the top. All right guys, so the core of this tutorial is how to process these drone images in camera raw. There's a few things you can do when you're out flying on location that will result in better images. The first and most obvious is gonna be keeping the drone idle while taking pictures. You don't wanna take them when you're flying past the subject because that's just gonna add in unnecessary motion blur. Also, keeping the drone in GPS mode will help prevent drifting while the drone is idle. Next, I recommend the highest shutter speed you can use and still get proper exposure on your image. The high shutter speed will also reduce motion blur if the wind is rocking the drone while it's idle. I highly recommend taking your images in manual mode and utilize the histogram that's in the DJI GO app settings to help monitor your exposure. Finally, I also want to note that the picture profile and the white balance you choose aren't as important in our case because we're going to be working directly with the raw images. All right guys, so I think I got enough images here on the mountain. Let's jump back over to the studio and process these in camera raw. All right guys, so I tend to shoot with a proper exposure and white balance with my drone. And an old habit of mine was when I would get back, I would just pull the JPEGs off and not the raw images because since they already looked relatively correct, I would just go ahead and grade those from there and just kind of sped up my workflow. Now I later discovered that the raw images are a little bit sharper than JPEGs that come from DJI drones. And there's a little debate as to why this is happening, but most likely it's just the compression of the JPEG loses a little bit of extra detail that you're gonna retain in the raw images. Going along with this, there's also some settings we can utilize with the raw images to get better overall quality. I'm gonna go over the settings that I apply most frequently. I also wanna mention that if you download the project file for this tutorial, I've included the raw image I'm gonna be using today so you can follow along. And you can download the project file from the blog post for this tutorial on the Shutterstock blog. All right, so I'm just gonna double click on my raw image here, and that'll go ahead and launch Photoshop and open up the image in Camera Raw. You can also adjust very similar settings to Camera Raw in Lightroom if you prefer to use that instead. All right, so if we come over here and look at the settings that we can adjust, we can see we have a histogram up here at the top, and then we have our typical camera settings if we need to adjust things like white balance or the exposure if your ISO was a little bit high in this image. The ISO looking was a little bit high, so I'm just gonna bring that down to recover some of those highlights there and get a little more color. Now I'm gonna zoom in here just a little bit more so we can see this. One of the settings you may be drawn to uh, to get more image detail or to get better image quality is gonna be the clarity. And I will say that a lot of the settings inside of Camera Raw are kinda like a double-edged sword. So with the clarity, if I go ahead and increase this to get more detail on everything, it's gonna add more contrast in a lot of the darker areas. But what it does, is it actually desaturates it as well because it's adding in that extra contrast. So you can see if I go ahead and boost this all the way to 100, you'll see it kind of washes out the color of the overall image. We can see more fine details, but again, it's not really a fair trade-off when you go all the way up to the maximum. And you can see if I bring this back down below, you can see now we get a lot more color, but we don't have as much contrast and everything looks very washed out as far as the fine details go. So I'm gonna bring the clarity back up to zero and I typically might increase this maybe around 10 or 12 or so just to bring in a little bit more detail but not wash out too much color. Now the next setting is really valuable with aerial shots. It's gonna be dehaze. So you can see these mountains, they're of course washed out further back in the distance. You can see as I increase this, dehaze is gonna target areas of the image that are definitely less contrasty and lighter in color tone and it's gonna boost the saturation and contrast in those areas. You can see how that affected that. So I drag this up and down, you can see 
And that's something that's really valuable when you're adjusting details on aerial photos. Now contrasting this, if I actually zoom back out here, I'm gonna fit this to view with the dehaze. If I bring this actually down, you can see it's almost like it's gonna add in fog to the shot. So that's another stylistic choice you can make if you would like. I wanna bring this back up to about positive 30. Now next I have vibrance and saturation. I'll typically increase the vibrance a little bit because it's gonna really bring up the color tones of the blue and greens in the shot. Then I'm gonna actually bring the saturation down in the negative a little bit as well. And that again, just make sure we don't have too much of an artificial high saturation on this image. Again, because I really just wanna prepare this before I wanna actually do a color grade onto this shot. Now the next option is to adjust if you're looking for better image quality. We're gonna to come to the lens correction tab right here. It's right in the middle. And then we're gonna see the profile tab and you're gonna see the option to remove chromatic aberration. I'm gonna zoom in here over here on these trees. We're gonna see kind of the results this is gonna provide. This is really noticeable when you go to print out your images. So you can see there's a slight green teal fringe around these leaves here on this tree. And then if I actually come down here to the bottom of the image, we're gonna see we get a little bit of a magenta edge on some of these tree branches like right here. This may be difficult to see with the compression of the tutorial, but I'll go ahead and turn on remove chromatic aberration. And you can see it removes that magenta fringe that was right there. And I'll go ahead and uncheck that and we'll come back up here to the top on this pine tree here. Let me go ahead and turn that back on. You can see it's just gonna remove that teal area. And on occasion when you do this, it may not remove all of the chromatic abrasion. You can see right here, there's a little bit, it looks like maybe right there. You can come over here to manual, the manual tab, and you can adjust the purple and green amount. So if I increase this, we'll actually get rid of that spot that was right there. It looks like there might be a little magenta up there as well. And I can go ahead and take that away as well by adjusting it manually. And so let's go back over to the profile. I'm gonna go back down to 100% or fit in view. The next option we have is enable profile corrections. Now this may not work for every drone. I'm using the Mavic Air and there actually isn't a profile built into Camera Raw yet for the Mavic Air. But I'll go ahead and demo this. I'll check this on and you can see the setup here. I'm gonna leave it on default. And then for the lens profile, you can see I can go ahead and select DJI. And then you can have different models that you can select from here. So if your drone is available, I do recommend using that. Again, the Mavic Air does not have one available at this time, so I'm gonna uncheck enable that profile correction, but I can come over to manual. If I wanted to adjust some distortion, I could do that manually here if I needed to, if I needed to level out like a horizon line in the background, that kind of thing. I think this shot looks pretty level, so I'm gonna leave it at zero. Next, if I wanna manually adjust, I can adjust some vignetting as well. You can see just around the edges here, it gets a, a little bit darker, and that's pretty typical, especially on a wide angle drone shot. So I might increase this to something like 15 just to help get rid of that darkening around the edges. Now one cool thing you can do in Camera Raw is preview a lot of different looks really quickly. Again, if you are gonna grade this later and you just wanna see many variations of what this image could look like with different grading profiles, come over here to the Presets tab and you're gonna see all these different presets and I'll go ahead and check these down. Now all you need to do is just highlight your mouse over these and you'll see it automatically adjust to that image. Now don't actually click it. If you do click it, it's gonna apply all of those settings to your raw image which you can undo later. However, you don't want to undo all the adjustments you just made. This is really just so I can preview what this is going to look like. So again, as you can see, as I roll down this list, we can see different looks and I go to the creative here and I can see all these different creative looks on this image. Maybe see a grade that I might want to try later. Or if I see one that I really like, I can go ahead again and click this here and it will apply that directly to this raw image. Now, once I've settled on my look here, I'm going to go ahead and select open image. And that's gonna open up this image in Photoshop. And from here, I can go ahead and grade the image however I see fit. And then if I wanna save this out, I would just come up here to File and then just Save As. And that'll give you the option to save the image as whatever file type you prefer. And then you can go ahead and just save it. All right guys, hopefully you picked up a few tips from this tutorial. Make sure you check out the other content on the Shutterstock blog. And again, this has been Charles Jager for Shutterstock. Thanks for watching. Yeah.